Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This isn't actually the video I was intending to do for today, uh, but Wednesday's video had uh, prompted uh, a great many comments and suggestions, and after reading through them all, uh, it altered how I had decided to do this video. And by the way, that is exactly the kind of thing I hope for. Every time I put up a video, I read through all the comments, uh, I see how people are discussing various aspects of what I've done, and how things could be done differently, and um, forwarding all their ideas, and that is <laughs> that is great. I like that. And so this is going to be a video that's going to take that generic hob from uh, Wednesday, which is just like a planter. All it was is a box. Uh, Pothos is going to be there, a bunch of roots. Water is going to flow through it, go back in the tank, and it was just going to help the Pothos grow. A lot of people thought that the flow pattern for it uh, would not be something that would, you know, utilize the space as well as it should. Uh, the water would flow mostly across the top and whatnot. So what I'm going to do here at the end of this, I'm going to make a, a couple of changes to this. Uh, by the way, you can make hundreds of these. <laughs> One video idea I had for this was 101 things you can do inside a hob, but <laughs> I didn't have any time this week. I mean, I work a lot of hours. I too try to get uh, to as many things as possible, but there is only a limited amount of time in a week. So what I'm going to do here is, at the end of this video, I am going to do a flow test for this filter, well, the hob, and how things that you put in it can affect it. But we'll save, we'll save that for the end. What I'm doing here is, is I'm building an insert. Inserts can be made many different ways, and this particular one is just going to use uh, some egg crate and acrylic. Now egg crate is made from uh, styrene, it's not actually acrylic, uh, but methylene chloride will actually dissolve the surface of it and then of course it will form a bit of a weld. It doesn't form the best of welds uh, with acrylic, but for something like this it's uh, perfectly fine. It'll, uh, it'll do more than enough to hold this together. And it's a great way of adding uh, chambers into your filtration systems. So what you do here is, as you can see, the water is going to flow in through one area, reach a wall, have to flow up or down depending on how you uh, place this, and then it will go through the other set of holes. And in this uh, box, which can be pulled up, put in, all that sort of stuff, uh, you can put whatever you want. You can put in lava rock, you can put in a filter foam. Uh, really it doesn't make any difference. and That's one thing I really want to stress for the standard aquarium at home. Uh, almost all these things will work. Uh, it's not so much uh, you know trying to utilize the absolute best filter in the universe for anything. Uh, they're all gonna work. Uh, it's just trying to find one that um, suits your maintenance style. Actually that's probably the most important thing because if you don't want to clean it you're not going to clean it and then any dirty filter <laughs> like when it gets to a certain point is uh, not going to do what it's supposed to do and that's when you're going to have issues but if it's something you don't mind uh, taking apart and fixing or cleaning or whatever you'll do it and then that's that's actually the kind of thing you're trying to hope for so this is like i said this is just a box it's just going to fit inside uh, and there are many other ways I could have done this. I could have just filled that, filled with, uh, like I put a f couple pieces of foam in there, throw in some lava rock, and it, but what that will do is it makes it more difficult to take things out and clean. So if you have to, like I said, if you have to work at it, it's less likely you're going to do it. So a chamber like this, no matter what you put in it, uh, is easy to pull out and put back in and easy to clean and that, therefore hopefully uh, you'll you know actually do it. So there you go, it's actually a very easy box to build and like I said methylene chloride and by the way that's the glue I use, methylene chloride <laughs> no matter how many times I say methylene chloride uh, there is going to be someone saying hey what's that glue you're using? <laughs> that's okay. Um, so anyway this box <laughs> will, is as you can see here shortly going to fit in quite easily and you can make as many of these as you want to fit in here and of course every time you add something to a filter you will alter the flow through it. Uh, someone actually suggested I make one that was really long like about four feet. Now there's no reason why a four foot hob won't work 
but it will alter the flow. So depending upon what you put in it and all that sort of stuff, you could end up with flow issues and you may need to add more flow or more intakes or whatever, but we'll get to some more of that in a few minutes. Now, a suggestion I got was to deflect the water down instead of having it go across. Uh, that way uh, it will you know, go to the bottom and then come back up and then you get more of a turnover. So I said, well, that's easy enough to do. But I thought I'd do it a little bit differently. Uh, this is an acrylic rod. Uh, I got this actually from uh, Sam from Auto uh, uh, LED. Uh, he had a bunch of stuff he was planning on doing, but uh, never really got around to using the acrylic, so he gave me a whole pile of it. And he says, yeah, hey, make stuff out of it. So here you go, Sam. This is the first thing I'm uh, making from uh, some of your uh, acrylic. And the neat thing about this is, as I drill this here, is there are very few objects that you can uh, drill a hole through and watch the hole being drilled. It's kind of neat to see. And there, uh, there you go. There's a how a drill bit works. Uh, and that's the main reason why this footage is actually here, just to show you that part of it. And also to show you the process I do for... Uh, drilling a one-inch hole. I mean, you can't just drill a one-inch hole uh, and have a good hole, like uh, have a nice smooth hole, because you end up having to remove too much material at once, and especially with acrylic, as I said before, it is not really a machinable plastic. It heats up too much, and it melts, and it causes issues. But if you keep it cool and lubricated, as I'm doing here, uh, you can do it in the step process. But it's kind of neat seeing how the hole's made. It's just, it's just one of those things. So here's the final uh, bit that's going to be uh, the final one inch and you can just see it just trimmed down <laughs> the last little bit of the hole. And then what you can do as I've done before in some of the other uh, builds is you can actually polish that if you want. Uh, I'm not going to bother here because it's uh, it actually turns out to be a relatively uh, smooth hole. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take that over the milling machine, uh, do the exact same process but at 90 degrees to this hole and then I'm going to form uh, an elbow. Now, obviously, I could have made that elbow out of pretty much anything else, or I could have just bought an elbow. But because this is such, <laughs> I like the look of this filter, I didn't really want to ruin the look by putting on something of a different material. So that's the reason why this is made out of acrylic. And again, of course, to show you the drilling process. So I just have a, a pipe to go down. That gives you the 90, and then that just pops on. So that is two simple things, well, sorry, <laughs> two relatively easy things that you can do for uh, Hob to change things. Obviously the box is the easy one, uh, this is just a bit different, but you could put an elbow on it and again that would do the same purpose, it just would look you know, not as nice as this one, simply because I wanted to make it out of acrylic. So here we go, <laughs> now we're going to get to the flow tests. So what I've done is I've taken some flake food, I've put it in... Uh, water to get it so it flo uh, just uh, floats around instead of just on the surface and this is with nothing this is just the way it is so you can see there's a lot of turbulence it goes everywhere uh, but this is of course with the pump at its maximum output which you may not want to run it at so that will change the flow <laughs> everything you do changes how water flows through your filter uh, I can't emphasize that enough so here I'm going to put the down pipe on this and you can see the water going down and then I'm going to add the food again which reminds me I need to do a water change on this tank because uh, they got a lot, a lot more food than it normally gets in a day. Uh, so anyway the water is going down now and then I'm going to add uh, more of the water with the food in it and watch what happens. You get a lot of water flow across the top which just seems counterintuitive for some reason but it does alter how it goes you get a lot of turbulence at the bottom of course but at the top it's almost like it's uh, just flowing sideways and not as turned over as it was before uh, but then again like I said everything you add in will alter how the flow goes so I'm gonna take this one off again and then I'm gonna put the box in and we're gonna do it again and you're gonna see like I said how everything can change how the pattern goes and of course as soon as you put media in and all this other stuff you know, this is also all going to change things and because there's nothing in this it's going to move around a little bit uh, but once you put media in it it'll sit still quite nicely and then we're going to add some more food and water and 
watch how the pattern goes. A lot of turbulence in the first chamber. The water attempts to go across, of course runs into uh, the wall there, and then it's forced down, and it goes across again. I mean, this is the kind of standard baffle that they put in almost every filter that exists. Uh, but you get to see that there's a flow through there. But the neat thing is, is when you put this back in, and now watch how the flow goes here again, you get actually uh, an even better uh, turnover. Like you get the that sort of like uh, sine wave, like the S shape, whatever you want to call it, of the flow of the water here as this goes through. See, it goes down, goes back up, goes back down, turns over a bit, and then goes back all the way up and goes out. And the more things you add, and the more media you put in, <laughs> the more complicated the flow gets, and everything changes it. And no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, there will always be a bit of a dead spot, <laughs> as you can see here where a bit of uh, food is accumulated. You can't help it, it will happen. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And as always, uh, I'll see you in the next video, and uh, bye for now.